Okay, so this is the first video I'm going to make on the EU referendum. It certainly won't be the last. Some people may be surprised that I haven't made a video so far on this because it's obviously a very important issue. And I'm someone who follows politics, geopolitics very closely. Truthfully, the reason I haven't made a video so far is that, speaking candidly, I'm still forming my judgment on this. I still haven't voted and I still am not 100% sure which way I'm going to vote. I will say I'm more swayed by staying in, but it's not solid. So rather than talk at great length about the pros and cons of both sides, and there are pros and cons of both sides, I want to just talk about what I've seen tonight on Sky News and explain why this sort of thing is shaping my thinking. So I'm not making this video to say I am voting to stay in. I'm trying to explain why it's shaping my thinking. I will say one thing, um, I'll be pleased when the whole thing is over because I think it's starting to provoke sort of um, a level of, I wouldn't say sectarianism, but a level of tensions that is comparable to the Scottish referendum. And it got quite ugly up there. I was there in Edinburgh on referendum day. It got quite ugly. A few days ago in Northampton, there was some very heated exchanges between people on the street, between the Remain and Stay campaign. Now, to be clear, here in the UK, we don't kill each other over differences of opinion, generally speaking, which is a good thing. A passionate debate um, can have its place, but I do sometimes wonder that it can polarise people to the point where we forget that we're all British, we're all compatriots. Um, I have to say I was very disappointed by the coverage from Sky News tonight. Not overly surprised, because I've always taken Sky News to be a biased network, just as biased as the BBC. I believe all networks are, incidentally. But basically, David Cameron was being interviewed well. Um, interrogated, it looked more like, by Faisal Islam, the Sky News. Um, he used to be the financial correspondent, but I think he's now the political correspondent. Anyway, um, it was very difficult to listen to what the Prime Minister was saying because every single answer was crudely interrupted by Faisal Islam. Every single answer. Um, I understand that journalists have a job to do and I wouldn't want a situation where he's just sitting passively there listening to answers. It is important that he asks the Prime Minister tough questions about a very important issue. That's very important. But it becomes very difficult to watch, very irritating and hard to reflect on the Prime Minister's answers when every single answer is rudely interrupted. And it was pretty much every answer. And this is a classic example of contemporary British journalists caring more about their own ego than about letting the subject actually address the public. Um, it was very, very difficult to really... I think the Prime Minister handled himself very well. Cameron's always been good under heat. He's always been tough-skinned in that sense in my opinion. And I'm not a fan of him or his party, I should say his party. But I will give credit where credit is due. Cameron has always been tough-skinned on these occasions. That's why he survived as Prime Minister for six years. But I just thought it was very rude and the interrupting wasn't really justified. You know, it looked to me like Faisal Islam was just trying to score points. And it got to the point where it went into outright personal attacks. He was doing a Jeremy Paxman, really. Um, so whether he's trying to make his mark on Sky News, I don't know. But he was basically doing a Jeremy Paxman, and he was outright saying, oh, you were very negative during the Scottish referendum. You're, that's, that's totally biased journalism. That is exactly the sort of lines the Brexit campaign is coming out with. So this isn't just a case of a fair question would have been, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, some people have accused you of scaremongering. How do you answer to this? That would be a fair question, not you have been scaremongering. That's total bias from Faisal Islam. Then it came to the point of the audience asking questions. Supposedly, this was a mixed audience. Well, it seemed to me virtually every question was attacking the Prime Minister. One girl got up, and this was quite interesting. She is she was a Moroccan student. Um and she says that she is going to vote to remain in or she's pro remaining in. But she went into a rant basically about, and blatantly she was an attention seeker, in my opinion. She went into this rambling 
tirade about the Remain campaign being negative and uh, and she was just outright attacking the Prime Minister to the point of just being plain rude. Um, she was saying instead of waffling on, and you know, I always find with these studio audiences, you always get a few people who like their little 15 minutes of fame. And it kind of bugs me a little bit because studio audience need to be aware that they are a very, 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 very small percentage of 65 million people. They're in a privileged position. So yes, they should ask important questions, but a lot of people, this might sound like a strange thing to say, but I find a lot of people in studio audiences kind of lap up their 15 minutes of fame. And we live in a democracy, they have every right to ask those in power tough questions. But I do think you should be respectful when you ask a question. She was just being down right rude. Um, the Prime Minister was really being gracious in light of the sort of abuse he was taking from that audience, I thought. And that's me as a non-Tory defending a Tory Prime Minister. Um, the bias tonight was just disgraceful. Um, now, we'll see if Michael Gove gets the same treatment tomorrow. Um, I was going to say I hope he does, but... To be honest, I don't think this is good for journalism in general. I think something as important as this, of course, of course, journalists have to ask tough questions. But when it just looks like personal attacks for the sake of it, that is very, very off-putting to me. And I think the Prime Minister handled it very well. I think he made compelling arguments. And, you know, people expect him to be Superman in this regard. They... They say things like he's a traitor and so on because he didn't get exactly what people wanted. From my perspective, he tried his level best in those, those negotiations. Now, some of the things Cameron has said have been reckless, that's true. But in terms of the Remain side being negative as a whole, I totally reject that. I see a lot of positive arguments. It's the same allegation that was made by against unionists during the Scottish referendum. Since when is presenting facts being scaremongering? People need to learn the difference between the two. So when the Prime Minister is pointing out what will happen if we leave, that's not scaremongering. It's facts. Um, I mean, OK, you could say that the, the Brexit side is also pointing out facts in some things. And, you know, both sides are using colourful language. But this is an important issue. With all due respect to Jon Snow, I don't quite know what he was talking about when he said it's a very boring campaign. I don't think it is. Um, but the attitude of a lot of Brexit people, and I'm not talking about everyone here, because I think there's plenty of people who have legitimate concerns about the EU, but the attitude of some Brexit people Brexit people to me is very off-putting. It's a usual arrogance from UKIP, and it's a classic case of extremes on both sides, because it is true there are some on the hard left who just casually call people a fascist and a racist if they express concerns about immigration. But every time I see a UKIP comment online, it goes something like this. Cameron is a traitor. UKIP is the only pro-British party. Stay in or you're a traitor. That's the sort of attitude that UKIP people are constantly coming out with. And it's sheer arrogance. Um, yes, it's true that the hard left can be very, very um, intolerant of different opinions. So I, I see both extremes. And as a centrist, I am wary of both extremes. Um, I have strong views on the European Union, but I think there's legitimate points on both sides. But I will say at this point, the negativity I am seeing is from the Brexit side because, well, OK, the Leave campaign to give their official title. But the reason I say that is because they're presenting this very black and white situation that if we leave, everything's perfect. That doesn't sound like a very compelling argument to me. Um, we leave, everything will be perfect, there'll be no issues, we could do everything ourselves. But they're ignoring the fact that Norway, Switzerland still have to pay into the European Union. They still have to negotiate with the European Union. I think Cameron made a very good point when he said that Greenland, which only has 60,000 people, took three years for its exit negotiations. Now, if that took three years and Greenland has 60,000 people, assuming this is the truth, Britain's got 65 million people. This is not going to be a smooth divorce. This is going to be a very, very complicated, long period of uncertainty. Now, on the other hand, I do have real concerns about the migration factor. Um, and I do think 
the Remain side and the Prime Minister have a responsibility to really, really convince people that that can be controlled. Um, what David Cameron said was that from now on, because of the negotiations, um, there has to be a referendum in Britain before any more laws can be passed in Brussels. Incidentally, the number of British laws that are made in Brussels are a lot less than the Leave side claim. It's something like 10%, certainly not the huge percent that the, the Leave side claim. Um, one person shot, heckled Cameron and said, oh, it's the establishment. He made a good point. Jeremy Corbyn is hardly establishment. The Green Party is hardly establishment. Another point I'd like to make, this idea that politicians coming together is somehow a bad thing. Since when? Surely that's a good thing. Surely that is positive. That politicians from different hues and colours coming together for what, from their argument, is a greater good. Surely that's a good thing. I mean, it's a toxic situation in Scotland. In my opinion, the SNP has poisoned the environment there. Because they've created a situation whereby if Jeremy Corbyn appears with David Cameron, it damages Labour in Scotland. They, they have created a very sectarian envir environment whereby basically, unless, if you're a Labour person in Scotland, unless you throw darts at Margaret Thatcher and express a vitriolic hatred of the Tories, then you're not a real Scot. It's a very ugly, very sectarian environment which they have created. And I find that very troubling because it means that you cannot have a situation where people from different parties work together for a bipartisan reason. This is one of those issues that goes beyond party politics. And the SNP, if they are truly for remaining in, they need to get behind the Prime Minister instead of publicly attacking him. It, their behaviour is pathetic, but it just proves their number one goal is Scottish separatism. Nicola Sturgeon has threatened another referendum uh, to break away if uh, if the UK leaves the EU. Um, so she's just making threats and it's it's pathetic. She should be getting behind the Prime Minister because this is one issue they agree on. Um, as for the Tories backstabbing the Prime Minister, you know, I think that's disgraceful. This Prime Minister has had some of the most complex constitutional issues of any Prime Minister. And in my opinion, he has handled them, I wouldn't say superbly, but he's done his level best. And... This is me as someone who, frankly, hates many Tory policies. I am no Tory, but I will defend the Prime Minister when I think that some of the things that are going on out there, like these statements that he's a traitor and so on, really, are we getting into the gutter? Are we really describing the democratically elected British Prime Minister as a traitor? I mean, that's a really loaded term, and it's that's what's putting me off the Brexit arguments. They talk about negative campaigning. But it isn't the Remain side that is using words like traitor. Um, frankly, they're behaving just like the sectarian Scottish nationalists. And it's really, frankly, for me, very off-putting. So all this does is lean me more towards remaining in. And that's not to say the situation is perfect. I do think that some Brussels bureaucrats can also be arrogant. Um, and I'll be making plenty of other videos about this before referendum day. I'm not cemented on this. I'm not saying I'm absolutely voting to remain in. All I would say is if you are for leaving the EU and you want to comment on this video and say, vote UKIP, leave, that isn't going to convince me. If you want to persuade someone like me, then stop using terms like traitor. Stop vilifying the remain side. And the remain side should stop vilifying the leave side. We need some civility in this because... Otherwise, the whole country is going to be just as divided as Scotland was post-referendum. And that's a very troubling thought to me. Um, personally, I thought the Prime Minister's performance tonight was solid, despite the obnoxious circumstances he was facing. Once again, I have no problem with journalists asking tough questions. It's a job. But when it becomes every other answer being interrupted, that's just, that's just pure... It's, it's something that has been very much the trend of British journalists in recent years and not just on the right some on the left as well um and it's very very off-putting i wanted to complain to sky news about this actually because i think it's a serious problem um they don't exactly make it easy to find some uh format to complain so i dropped that idea but i did leave my views on their on their page um so finally this video was not about saying remain is right and leave is wrong 
The Leafs, I do have strong arguments. I absolutely agree with that. But they need to be aware that right now, for a lot of those of us in the middle, okay, there'll be other people who are undecided will say the Remain side has been negative. I don't think they have. I don't think you could take one or two stupid sound bites and then say the whole campaign is negative. You have to judge the campaign as a whole. And the overwhelming issue of the campaign has been talking about positive reasons to stay in. Cameron has made a few foolish statements, but so has Boris Johnson. Both sides are doing this. Um, and it is, they shouldn't do that. It's misguided. Um, but yeah, we need more civility. And if you're for leaving, I fully respect your views, but don't try to impose your views on me. I'm not doing that with anyone else. I'm just observing, honestly, reflecting on what I have observed with this. Thank you for watching. I'll make more videos about this before referendum day.